today I wanted to show you how to config and operate NetElastic's CDNAN router. Before I dive into the technical details, I would like to highlight some of the key features of our CGNAT router. First, our CGNAT router is highly scalable. It can scale up to 4 million NAT sessions. Secondly, not only we support easy IP type of NAT on a single interface, uh, we also support complex NAT rules with a pool of public IPs. In terms of dynamic NAT rules, we support both PAT and SPR port to IP mapping algorithms. This gives you the flexibility to balance resource usage and the user NAT experience. Last but not least, we have a comprehensive NAT logging mechanism that allows you to log both locally as log files and remotely to syslog servers. With local logging, we have an archiving mechanism where we log, compress, and store only the most 10 recent archives, so you don't have to worry about logging size grow out of control. Now let's take a look at CGNAT configuration. First, we config NAT policy and port map rules. The NAT policy are global policy that applies to all NAT rules. Port map rule defines the size, range of ports, and also the manner how the ports are allocated. Next, we define a public IP range as a resource pool. These are the IPs that the private IPs will be NATed to. For easy IP type of NAT, where you only have a single outgoing interface, the public IP pool definition uh, won't be necessary. Next, we will define a NAT rule that link port map definition to either a outgoing interface or a public IP pool. NAT rules can be defined either as dynamic rules or static rules, and you can define as many NAT rules as you like. All rules are global unless specifically tied to a user's authorization template. In that case, it will be applied only to those users. Finally, we have to enable NAT on all relevant interfaces. This includes the outgoing network interfaces and the subscriber access VGI interfaces. Now let's get down to the configurations. First, let's look at the user policy. User policy are global rules that applies to all NAT rules. Most of the keys here are self-explanatory. There are a few things I would like to draw your attention to. NAT mode defines the port and IP mapping algorithm. It should be set to full cone mode. The working form can be either BRAS or standalone. If you are setting the BNG as a subscriber management platform in conjunction with CGNAT, then you should set this to BRAS. If you are setting the BBNG as a standalone CGNAT router without a subscriber management, then you should set this to standalone. Max Entries sets the maximum number of CGNAT sessions. Make sure to set this value to the licensed number of CGNAT sessions. The log section allows you to set NAT logging on or off, and also allow you to specify the log style. Type 3 is the most commonly used log format. Now let's take a look at some of the rules. IP pool group defines a pool of public IPs. You can add multiple sections under one public IP pool. Also, you can define as many IP pool groups as you like. Now let's take a look at the port map group definition. Here you define the starting port and the size of the port block. Here you also have the port range enable option as highlighted in red. If port range enable is not config, the mapping algorithm will be PAT. If port range enable is config, the mapping algorithm will be SPR. Port range enable provides a very flexible way to config user's port allocation. In the example shown here, the user will be initially allocated 200 ports. When the usage reaches 80%, the NAT module will allocate additional 300 ports, and this process can be repeated five times. Again, you can define as many port map groups as you need. Keep in mind, the parameters defined in port map group is for each public IP. So the total number of available NAT sessions equals to the number of public IPs multiplied by the size defined under the port map group. Now let's take a look at the NAT rule definition. A NAT rule links port map group to an interface IP or a IP pool group defined. 
The first example here shows a NAT rule that links portmap group MyNet to an interface. All private IPs subject to this rule will have the public IP associated with the interface. The next example shows a NAT rule that links a portmap group to a pool of public IPs. The mapping also has an associated ACL rule, meaning only the private IPs matching the ACL rule will be NATed. Now let's take a look at how to apply NAT to interfaces and how to associate NAT rules to subscribers. First, for all the subscribers whose traffic needs to be NATed, we need to set NAT inside for all their corresponding VGI interfaces. Then we need to set NAT outside for all the outgoing interfaces. Then we need to bind the NAT rule defined to the user's associated authorization template. Now let's take a look at some of the CGNAT operation related commands. Show NAT status shows the current NAT operating status. Here you will see the total number of users, total number of sessions, total number of TCP sessions, UDP sessions, ICMP sessions. Here organized by NAT rules, you will see the total number of available sessions and the usage percentage. Here you want to make sure the usage percentage is a healthy number. If the usage percentage number is getting close to 100%, that means you probably it's time for you to look into adding more NAT resources. This can be either adding more public IPs or increase the port size for each uh, public IP. The command show NAT statistic list overflow users and exhaust users. Overflow users are those who have used all their initial allocated sessions and have been allocated additional sessions. Exhaust users are those who have used up all available sessions and no more sessions could be established for those users. You want to pay attention to those overflow users to make sure they are not using too much NAT resources. You also wanted to make sure exhaust user count to be zero so new NAT sessions can be created for everyone. This command shows how to list all NAT sessions, how to list all NAT sessions for a particular user how to list all NAT sessions for a particular user on a particular public IP. Now let's log on to a um, um, router and take a look at a working example. Uh, uh, let's take a look at the current configuration. Look at that configuration. <coughs> so here you can see my NAT I have uh, the user policy definition, uh, the log definition. Uh, with the log defined switch turned on, the NAT log is enabled. And here is my uh, public pool definition, uh, port map definition. And uh, I have two NAT rules defined. One is uh, a NAT rule using a interface as NAT, uh, e easy IP sort of a NAT configuration. And then I also have a NAT rule defined here that maps to a port map to a public pool. Now let's take a look at the NAT sessions summary. Show NAT status shows the current NAT status. Here you see we have three users, 20 TCP sessions, for the UDP sessions and to for a total of 60 sessions. We have two NAT rules defined and they are both in PAT mode and um, I have each of them configured 10,000 blocks and these are the usage percentage. Now let's take a look at the show NAT statistic result. Here you can see um, I have a zero overflow user and zero uh, exhaust user. And this is exactly what you expect. Now let's take a look at the, the list of NAT sessions for a particular user. So here we are filtering the NAT session list by a particular user. And this list all the NAT sessions associated with this user and also we also know what NAT rule it is under 
and these are all in F sessions. Now let's take a look at how to list the all the sessions by a particular user and public IP. So here we are listing all the NAT sessions associated with this user and uh, has this public IP. Here we go, we see the same result as what we saw earlier. And this is expected because we only have one public IP here in this example. Now let's change the port and the IP mapping alg algorithm from uh, uh, PAT to SPR. So to do that, we need to config the NAT rules. So let's go to config mode, NAT, and let's see current configuration. So what we're going to change is change the port map rule here. So we need to go to port map <coughs> group, my NAT. This is current configuration. So we want to enable um, we want to see what is, a, what is the command. It's port range enable. So we say port range enable. Um, let's start with 200 ports. And then when the alarm threshold reaches 80%, we add another 200. And this can be repeated five times. And then let's commit. And um, we're done with the configuration. Now let's see if the NAT mapping algorithm has changed. And indeed it has. You can see both of the, the rules that are using the port map. Uh, the mapping algorithm has changed from uh, PAT, now it's SPR.